Good evening, everybody. So, I am in my garage. I'm out, not out fishing uh, at the minute. Uh, I've got something a little bit different today, so... Just arrived a new reel for me to try out. So, this is the new Shimano Power Aero XSC uh, in, in 14,000 uh, size or, or 1,400 size. Uh, a really, really nice um, little bit of kit. Uh, I've used its predecessors. I've used some of the Altegra reels. So, um, and I also own some of the other reels in the Shimano range, such as the Saragossa, fantastic rough ground reel, and the Bullseye, which is, is a really, really good reel with a slow retrieve. This reel is a little bit of a different kettle of fish with a high speed retrieve, um, a little bit more torquey, and I think this is going to be a really nice reel for the East Coast. So, this is a little bit of an unboxing, I suppose. Not really done this before, but um, here is the box that it comes in. I ordered this from Veals. Service is always very good from Veals, and it always comes very quickly. Uh, you know, they got this up to me in no time at all, so really, really happy about that. So the reel itself comes in a box with spacers, a spare spool, um, and the spacers can come in handy if you're the kind of angler that fishes tapered lines or fine braids. Uh, you might want to put the, the, the spacers on to make it a 6,000 or even a 10,000 size, uh, depending on how thick the line you're fishing is, because it avoids you having to then put 100, 150 metres of backing on that you otherwise really don't need to have on there, because if you've got 300 metres of super low diameter line on there, you, you don't need an extra 200 metres added on. So, so yeah, the spacers certainly do come in handy. I don't personally use them, but, uh, you know, again... Uh, horses for courses, you know, I'm sure I would get used to them if I was fishing low diameter lines all the time on the beaches, but most of my fishing leans towards sort of medium to heavy ground fishing for cod, spur dogs, uh, and, and other species. So uh, really, you know, it's it's different for everybody. However, they are uh, come in the pack. The spare spool um, is a good quality spool. So both of the spools are identical. They have these um, sort of notched like markings on the spool to help the line bed in. However, I always put a little bit of electrical tape over the base of the spool, particularly if I'm using braided lines, just to cinch it in that little bit better. So, um, yeah, the overall aesthetics of the reel are very pleasing. Nice finish. It's got that kind of gunmetal sort of darker coloration which is different to the sort of silver and more flashy looking reels like the Altegra that I've used and perhaps the, te the Technium. This is a little bit more of a mean um, looking reel in my opinion. So yeah, really nice with the kind of the gunmetal. You've got the kind of the gray, the black, the gold, all together a really, really nice package. So um, I'm just gonna get this spooled up and I'm actually gonna take it out and have a little fish with it and just see what I think of it. Now this reel is a surf casting reel designed for casting distance. It is torquey, so I think it's got enough poke to deal with big fish, and I think it's got the, the guts to deal with the heavy ground. But with that said, uh, you know, it's got to be put to the test. So I am going to spool this up with 0.37 braid, and I'm going to take it down onto my local rock marks, and I'm going to fish as I would normally, and I'm just going to see how this performs. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's going to be a little bit of a tackle test, a little bit of a suck it and see. Is this reel going to cope with the, the ground on the East Coast? suppose I'll find out. I'm used to using, I suppose, short spool, long, uh, you know, kind of rough ground reels like the Saragossas, Daiwa BGs, maybe Penn Spin Fishers, these kinds of reels. So using something with a little bit more finesse, it'll aid casting distance. And also I think the, the retrieve rate with this reel is great. Um, so I think there's going to be merits to, um, you know, having this kind of reel in, uh, in the, the kind of harsh, rocky, uh, shallow reefs and you know, deep tidal waters that, that surround the east coast of Scotland where um, where I'm going to be taking this and, and giving it a good thrashing. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get this spooled up. As for line setup on this, as I mentioned, I'm going to be spooling this with braid. I'll normally fill this to the hilt with uh, 0.37 braid, which I think is around about 70 to 80 pound breaking strain. And then on top of that, I will put a 13 meter braid or tapered monofilament leader, depending on the uh, situation that I'm fishing in. Just for that little bit of abrasion resistance, it's quick to change. You can just, I usually, I usually use a loop to loop connection for the braid leader so I can just, you know, have a bunch of them spare in the reel bag. 
I can just change them as they, you know, get abrased, uh, they get rubbed on the rocks, they start to fail, I can just swap them out. Um, and, and if it's clean to mixed ground or, you know, mixed ground, I, I sometimes will fish a tapered monofilament leader and the Cedra tapered leader is really excellent stuff. So anyway, without further ado, further ado I've spoken enough about the reel, I'm going to get it spooled up now um, and I'll talk you through everything else. Well, there we go. I've spooled the reel up now. Filled it to the hilt with 0.37 braid. As you can always expect from Shimano, the line lay is fantastic. So that will aid itself to effortless casting, accurate casting, and obviously reaching a good distance as well. So uh, I am going to get this packed away now. Get some bait out of the freezer. Take one of my trusty fire blades. In this case, it's the 13 foot fire blade GT. Uh, I'm going to go down onto a local rock mark and fish some deep tidal water targeting codling with the hope of a proper cod showing up. Well, I'm out of the rocks now. There's actually quite a little, quite a bit more swell than was anticipated, so I'm not fishing alone. Got my best mate Alan here. He's here for his head torch. <laughs> so yeah, fish in pairs, guys, if you're out in the rocks. Um, the East Coast takes no prisoners, you know, so I think it's uh, a message there is just never fish on your own, if you're, especially if there's swell. It's quite a lot of swell tonight. I'll um, switch the camera around and see if you can see any of it, but um, the rods are out now, so. Alan's fishing a T1000, and I am trying the Power Aero 14,000 XSC with a 13 foot Fireblade GT. Now, the sea's probably a little bit big, I'll be honest, for uh, for this rod, but you've got to give them a good test. So, we've got perfect quality conditions. So, we'll see what happens. Anyway, it's really raining and snowing quite hard. So, uh, I'm not going to leave the camera on. But what I will do is if we get a bite, I'll, uh, I'll come back and I'll, I'll grab the camera. So hopefully we'll be back with the fish soon. This particular mark I've not been down to for a few years, so it's nice to revisit an old pond and we're fishing into quite interesting ground, lots of little depressions and gullies, and troughs, and so the thinking behind the fishing tonight is just letting our leads roll around and, and essentially find the fish kind of roving style rather than picking, uh, fishing static, uh, you know, grippers and, and trying to kind of bed them in as such. So, yeah, we'll see how things go, but it's a lovely night to be out. It's quite calm, the wind's dropped away, but the sea's quite big as you can probably hear, I would imagine. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, yep, Alan, you're in. Unless that was a surge. Um, yep. No, it goes right, it's super fast. I'm battling his first fish here. Oh, see him. <laughs> Just a little fish to start off the session, but at the end of the day, I welcome all the same. Yeah, so... Well, it's still a nice sight to see. Blank shot. Nice luck, group. And that was on prawn, was it, Alan? It was. Bit of tiger prawn. So there we go, tiger prawn. Alan loves tiger prawn. He did well in it the last session we were out, and um, it's quite a, quite an accessible bait compared to peeler. So, so yeah, beautiful little cod. Um, we shall get this one seaward and return back to its home. Yeah, we're not greedy, you know, and that fish is borderline keepable anyway. So Alan's just going to release it now. That goes. Unfortunately, there's no easier release here. We're quite high up, so we've just got to deal with the cards that we've got. So yeah, but I think it's not not too sharp. Is it? Nah, nah, it's maybe a twenty good. foot, twenty foot uh, off the edge, and that fish ran away strong. Well, it took a little bit of time, but I finally had my first bite. 
and the sort of a reasonable little codlin I suppose. Really delighted with that. Um, first fish on the new Fireblade GT and also first cod on the Power Aero. How did it perform? Really well. Had that fish moving uh, up through the, the, the levels and uh, managed to bump it out of the snag without any issue at all. So yeah, really, really happy with that. Um, that fish has proper scoffed the bait down. Bluey and cod bait, so uh, bluey and cod? Blue, bluey and cart bait. So there we go. That's a fine result. I'll take that. It's a lean fish, you know, it's not not the not got the most weight to it, but um yeah, delighted all the same with that. So anyway, I'll get this fish on hook now, and uh, this one is gonna be for the table, so I'll just be keeping this one. So we've not got much back room here for casting, so we've just got to be a little bit kind of careful when we do cast. But um, yeah, again, it's nice to revisit bits like this. It was actually the mark that Alan and I first came cod fishing on, or that kind of general area, so it's nice to return. We've got a couple of fish out, so we can't really complain. Got a lot of swell washing in here now. Just with that change in the tide, we're starting to see the big sets coming in now. So, yes, we're going to keep on going. Sleep is for the week, that's what they say. Yes, yeah, sleep is for the week, so we're going to continue on. I've got a bait ready and um, another bait ready to go here. Kind of bait up station here, so again, simple bait, bluey and cart, all that's really required. Quite sort of conical shaped, I suppose, um, with nice proud hook points. That's the way that I prefer to fish for cod. I like a nice firm base for my bait, so I tend to use sort of a frozen fish or squid bait with something soft on the back, whether it's car or mussel or maybe a bit of lugworm, but um, yeah, that tends to pay off for me. We um, travel quite light down here because we've been yomping up and down cliffs, so it's rucksacks as opposed to boxes. Um, so yeah, it just pays to sometimes travel light because we've got quite a cliff to manipulate going back up as you can see um, and it's not really conductive to a good environment for seat boxes and hundreds of leads so yes so there we are anyway we'll go back and we have a fish hopefully so uh, that's us we're keeping on fishing on it's um, a little bit after half past nine now so we are over the bottom of the tide and um, things are starting to flood in now, so hopefully with that flooding tide comes some decent fit. We're, um, we're both sort of targeting this pinnacle. It sort of V's off into a, there's like a reef that runs off and goes into a V cut. And uh, there's a, like a lot of turbulence that runs around the front of that. So that's the, that's the kind of area that we're targeting at the minute sort of we'll pick a you know top and tail approach um, with cod fishing particularly on this coast it is important to spread your baits out a little bit so if you're you know fishing as a pair if you like for safety uh, it is important that you do distance your, your baits a little bit just so that you're not both fishing for the same fish essentially but, um, yeah I'm, I'm really really happy with that new reel and also the, uh, the Fireblade GT has surprised me, you know, 13 foot. I had my reservations, it's been a long time since I fished with a rod that short. And uh, it's, it's performed, you know, I was able to lift that fish up, no problem. The reel coped, the rod coped. Maybe I need to use shorter rods more often, you know, it's certainly comfortable, because we've not got much back casting room here, so uh, it did make for a more comfortable casting scenario. So uh, yeah, maybe food for thought there. I'm used to using 14 foot 10 rods, something like that. T1000, T700. Um, 
Yeah, we're gonna fish on for a little bit. We are, we're both working tomorrow, so probably not gonna fish through um, into, into the, the early hours. We've both got responsibilities, but um, yeah, it's good to sometimes just get out after uh, a long day at work. So yes, keep you posted. Just put another bait back out there. Bluey and car again. I sort of fished out a prawn lug and bluey bait and it didn't really pan out, it didn't really get any attention. So I've sort of up the bait size again, gone back to what was working before. And we'll see if that pays off. You can see how all the color has dropped out of this fish. Now it's been sat in the rock for a little while. I'm just laughing to myself because I've just uh, spent about five minutes speaking to the camera and the, the camera wasn't even recording. There we go. He needs a better cameraman. <laughs> You're supposed to be the cameraman. <laughs> Our cameraman's away over there fishing. So yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> Hire a cameraman to come out and you know, he's, he's just away catching fish. But um, So yeah, take two I suppose. Rigs. One rig I'm using tonight is a pulley rig. Simple one piece pulley rig with a 100 pound um, Varavas rig shock. The other rig that I'm using is a one piece bare bones rig, uh, a fixed pennel rig, which is tied up with 95 pound uh, Cedra Tough X leader, so. I think um, Alan's, getting his, his, Alan's actually getting his second bite of the evening here, so that's promising. So, in terms of the rig, it's tied comprising of one Cedra Crane Swivel, 195 pound. This is initially fed onto the line and tied, and it sits within this loop. You tie three overhand knots, pull it tight, and then your snood sits off the main body of the rig, almost like a boom. Um, so, down at the hook end here, we've got a panel arrangement. In this case, it's a 3.0 Cedra Penetrator Circle Hook down to a short shank wide gate. Again, both 3.0s with a, a blue in carp bait. And this is sort of pretty typical of what we'll fish in the winter for the cod. The bottom end of this rig leads down to a upside down Gemini Big Bait Clip, 30 pound amnesia down to a lead, which is your rotten bottom setup. So that obviously releases upon impact meaning you get your rig back if nothing else because it's quite snaggy ground that we're fishing into. These are quite long flowing rigs and we're fishing at height in some quite deep tidal water here so it can pay off to have a longer rig at times because it gives you that little bit more, um, you know, your bait's essentially pinned to the deck. If you had a short rig, you'd probably have it right up off the bottom, particularly with pulley rigs. So um, long flowing rig can sometimes pay off a little bit longer than you would normally fish anyway, for cause. So that's the thinking behind it anyway. So, uh, I'm gonna go and get another bait made up now. We like to double pat when we're doing this cod fishing, so getting two or three baits made up is smart darts because quite often the fishing can be fast and furious when it comes on. You certainly don't want to be missing the bite because you're baiting up, so. I've even seen when it's busy, we can just chuck the same baits back out again, out of pure laziness, but it will actually work, so. Uh, but so far, impressed with the Shimano Power Aero 1400. The retrieve on the reel is really, really nice. I like it. It's uh, certainly got the bait lifted up off the bottom quickly, away from any snags. Got it up onto the surface, and I was able to obviously wind it up the cliffs, no problem at all. So um, certainly ticking the boxes there, but we'll have to see what happens when it's got a fish on the end and if it copes um, in, in that sense. But it's cast and lovely. The line lay makes for a really smooth cast, very accurate cast. And um, so I'm really impressed with that element of it. And it's quite a rigid body as well. So it's the Hagani body that it's made of and it's quite rigid. It's not quite you know, as rigid as some of these other reels, but again, you compromise a lot of weight when you go for these sort of tough bomb-proof reels. So with a Shimano, you've got something a little bit more refined and a little more finesse, and I think it's certainly the way to go. Super light combination I've got tonight between the 13-foot Fireblade GT and the Power Aero. You just hardly know you've got the rod in your hands. So um, yeah, it certainly makes fishing a lot more enjoyable, that's for sure, and humping gear up and down cliffs. So.
So we've got another bait back out in the water now. So I've got the um, the fire the fire blade again for the power arrow back out. Went for a smaller bait this time, so this is the size of the bait that I had the fish on. Sort of a reasonable Louis and carp bait with a Varamass full circle and a wide gate short shank on the point. And um, the bait that we've got out at the minute is one of Alan's favourite baits. A little bit of fresh prawn with a bit of lug on it. So uh, we'll see, see what happens. Chuck back out in a similar spot. But yeah, very, very impressed with the reel so far. I think, um, I think I've got more confidence in that reel than ever, knowing that I was able to not only get that fish back through the hard and heavy ground, but also I was able to wind that fish up the cliff using the reel. So um, yeah, certainly 10 out of 10 in terms of confidence in how it performs. It's casting lovely. Line lay is very good straight out of the box. Didn't have to do anything with the washers at all. Uh, so yeah, really what more can you ask for? So the session's kind of winding down for us now. We've got to think about, you know, scaling back up the cliff, getting back home at a decent time as well. Um, the fishing's gone a little quiet, actually. We were hoping for a little bit more on the flood, but sometimes, you know, you can't win them all. And, and you know, we both had fish, so I think, um, you know, sometimes you just got to take what you get. Well, that's the end of that session. Back home now. And I have to say, I was really impressed with the uh, with the Power Arrow 1400. I think the high retrieve ratio really paid off. I was able to get my fish back, no problem. Nice torque, casts well. Nice loud drag. So yeah, it takes a lot of boxes, certainly. Um, so yeah, I've just kind of given it a bit of a wash down. And um, yeah, now on to cleaning and preparing the fish. <laughs>